since you mentioned the artificial sweeteners, um, maybe we can kind of dive into that just for a moment because it's it's fascinating work that you, your lab has done on um, the metabolic effects of, for example, artificial sweeteners, but also like food additives, emulsifiers. So you mentioned that that people had diverse responses to artificial sweeteners. Um, what were those responses? Like, yes. You know. So, so um, the study that we've published uh, um, mainly focused on mice. Um, and in mice, uh, we studied several uh, artificial sweeteners, but we mainly focused on saccharin as, as a very marked example. And what we found to our very big surprise was that um, mice featured um, a counterintuitive disturbance in their glycemic responses when they were exposed to saccharin, and this was driven by their microbiome. So, for example, when you uh, exposed mice to, to um, saccharin at different doses and took the microbiome after this exposure and transferred it into germ-free mice that never saw saccharin, they developed the same disturbances um, in blood sugar control as those of the donor uh, mice. And, and so this was a very complex study uh, um, that provided a proof of concept that some dietary compounds that we use, mainly modern dietary compounds that we regard as uh, inert because they don't seem to directly impact our body, may impact our body in peculiar ways indirectly through their effects on the microbiome. Um, and, and, and this, uh, I think, uh, proof of concept study was followed by many other studies. You, you uh, mentioned um, emulsifiers and, and there were studies on, on, on food colorants and, 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 and other uh, ingredients, which may bear effects in some people based on, the, uh, uh, on their impact uh, mediated on the gut microbes. Um, and, and this needs to be taken into consideration when assessing the safety uh, and, and the um, inertness of such substances. Were the levels, I, I think I recall reading, the levels of the dietary emulsifiers were even perhaps in levels that were uh, relevant for humans. Yeah, and, and, and you know, uh, in, in some of the mouse studies, the levels were higher than in humans, but in many of them, the levels were, um, um, you know, very similar to the ones uh, uh, observed in humans. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's difficult to directly compare mice to humans. The metabolism is not exactly the same. And we need to say, um, um, you know, to say that uh, out loud. Um, the concepts um, in, in many cases are very similar and the effects are very similar, but uh, mice are not humans. Um, but at least they suggest that um, such uh, impacts could be, um, could be happening and, and, you know, the, the, the burden of proof is on us. You know, before we recommend a substance, we need to, to make sure that at least sufficiently we, we understand what it does to our microbes, what it does to our human body, to make sure that we do no harm. Um, so, so not every mouse-based study could be directly translated into humans, but many of them provide um, an intelligence hypothesis that needs to be ruled in or ruled out in human studies that follow. Well said. Were, were there any preliminary human studies that were followed up with um, with the artificial sweeteners and or the emulsifiers? So with the artificial sweeteners, um, as part of the original study, we, we published a very preliminary small scale study um, suggesting that personalized responses um, to uh, saccharin uh, in humans uh, do occur and it could be even transferred upon microbiome transfers from human into, humans into germ-free mice. This was a very small preliminary study um, that we and others are trying to follow up on in larger uh, controlled trials um, that I hope would, uh, would teach us on potential uh, uh, personalized effects and how we can anticipate them um, or predict them in ways which would keep the use safe while, uh, you know, letting people enjoy sweetness. Uh, but but um, I would certainly say that there is emerging evidence that the findings that we came up with um, are not only reproducible in multiple uh, animal models, uh, you know, starting from uh, flies and all the way to, to, to mice, rats, and, 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 and piglets, uh, but they may be relevant to humans. The jury is still out there. This is a very young field. We'll wait for more results. Oh, if I can give you a suggestion, I think most people nowadays don't consume saccharin like they did 30, 20 years ago. Um, the big ones that I know a lot of people would be interested in, in, in knowing um, whether or not they're affecting the microbiome in a uh, good or bad way, or in, if they're neutral and their effects on metabolism as well, would be some of the non-nutritive sweeteners 
that are from natural sources like stevia or the monk fruit extract. So if you yeah, guys yeah. are interested in looking at that, I think that, that you know, the, many people um, would be very, very interested in, in, in that data as well, because um, a lot of people we're, consume it. I, I can only say we're on it. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs>